give Brother Hunter Spurry and Jesus a big hand. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm thankful for him. I appreciate him. You know, I was thinking about it. You know, we're here once again on a Wednesday night, Brother JR. I know there ain't a lot of people here, and I know sometimes the services may not be as good with as many people here in some people's eyes. Uh -huh. But I still, you're still going to get a word. You're still going to hear somebody say something encouraging to go home with. Amen. You're still going to accept the fact that you're here. Uh, I mean, you didn't drive all the way here for nothing, so we're here for something and Amen. for somebody. Amen. Amen. There may not be a lot, but Jesus himself told us that we're two or three are gathered together in his name. Uh -huh. See, the problem is people's looking for a shout down to the jail. Come on. They're looking for somebody to dance. They're looking for somebody to speak in tongues before they felt the move of God. Uh -huh. But in my heart, the move of God's already took place. Come on. If I come prepared to receive from the master, I've already received what I need to receive tonight, Brother Jay. Come on. The word's getting ready to be preached. I'm going to receive more. Uh -huh. I was praying that I said, Lord God, don't just let everybody receive, but I want to receive, Lord. Right. From whatever I bring forth, I want to be able to live by it. If Paul taught us whatever we preach, we need to live. Amen. Amen. I want to live what I preach. So whatever I told God, I said, whatever you bring forth, that's what I want. Amen. And I'm expecting to receive from them. Some people think that preaching is all fun and games, but honey, let me tell you something. I enjoy preaching because not only does it remind me when I get up here, I've got a job to do for you, but I've also got a job to do for me. It keeps me in line. Amen. It keeps me where I need to be. Sometimes, Brother Jerry, I wonder if I would still be in church had God not called me into the ministry, but I thank him that he did. Some people can complain about their job, but I was thinking to God, I'm, I'm content with where I am in God. I said, God, I'm content, not satisfied, not saying I'm not going to go higher, but I'm content with where he's put me, Brother Jerry. I'm content with where I'm working at. I don't have to be preaching in 10 different churches a week. I don't have to be preaching here, and pre but I'm content working where I'm working. Come on, bless you, Lord. And if God never does move me to do anything else but preach where I'm preaching and preach at the few churches that I know, that's good enough. Bless if the doors, I know Paul taught us, I believe it was Paul taught us about the doors being open. The, the, I don't know the prayer, something about the doors opening. Amen, but they open then I'll go. But if they ain't open, I'm going to be satisfied, church, with what I got. Come That's on. the problem, people. They're looking for another church. They're looking for another crowd of people. They're looking for another best friend instead of taking what they got and loving it and enjoying it and doing what they can where they're at. Come on. People's Amen. looking for it to move somewhere else. I've seen people jump from church to church. That's because I know if God moves you, that's fine. But if God don't move you and you're just running around because you don't want to hear the preaching, Come on. Come because you don't want to have the move of God, some people, they want the shout, but they don't want the correction. Come on. But God Amen. told us, he said, whom he loveth, he corrected. Amen. Yes. Love me, Lord. And I thank God for that. I don't, I don't want to ever get, but he said we're two or three together, together in his name. And I'm here in his name. Amen. Come on, amen. I'm here in his name. Amen. Amen. The importance of his name. I'm here because of him. Amen. I'm not here because of you. I'm here for his name. Amen. Come on. I'm here for Jesus' name. Come on. I'm not here for you. I'm not here for Stephanie. I'm not here for JR. I'm not here for, but I'm here for Jesus. Amen. Come on. So he's going to be here. He's going to be in the midst of Amen. me. He's going to be with me while I'm preaching. He's going to be with you while you're testifying. He's going to be with you. See, Brother JR, I found out sometimes, like I was telling Sister, I don't know if Sister Donna or somebody was singing, a lot of times I I've, I've get used to that book and reading off of it, but I've learned to just find a song. If I know the name of the song, just start singing, it'll come to me. Yeah. And if it don't, I mess up. You know what? I'm just going to keep messing up until I get it right. Amen. Come on. That's right. I mean, y'all remember what I told you about what God, what I told God? I told God, I said, I'm not giving up this time. That's right. I've been in church multiple different times where Jerem prayed and got back to the altar, but I, this time I said, I'm not giving up. Come on. Right. Brother, we don't need to give up. That's right. Amen, it's not a time to give up. Right. Amen, I fall down. I preach it all the time about us falling down, but the problem with people nowadays is it's getting back up. Amen. Amen. I believe it was Micah told us. He said, rejoice not against me, all my enemies, for when I fall, I shall arise. Amen. There's not, it's not, there's not a big deal of falling. We all mess up. I'm no greater than you are, but the problem is that people don't want to get up. Amen. I'm going to rise. I tell you, I look at the devil. Y'all remember when I preached that? Come Let the devil know I may fall, but I will arise. Come on. Amen. I'm going to rise out of it, no matter what it is, Brother Jay, whether it's depression, whether it's chains of pride or different things that come against us in this life. It's going to happen, but we've got to learn to get back up. Amen. Come on. Bless you, Lord. If you have your Bibles, turn to Genesis 29. I'm going to read two different scriptures, two different sets of scriptures in Genesis. Because they kind of, I want to mix them together and show you something that God has laid. He dropped this in my spirit today, and I don't. I went to get a pen, and I said, 
you know, like I normally do and start studying on it. And God told me, said, and I ain't never done this, but God spoke to me and said, don't take no notes. I felt like Brother Scott. And I said, no. And I tell you what happened. I got done praying. And God was showing me something. I went in there. And I went to get a piece of paper. I even wrote the title out and was getting ready to start. The Lord said, I told you don't bring no notes. So whatever you're going to get is going to be fresh off the paper. Amen. Amen. Genesis 29 and verse 16. Genesis 29 and 16 says, And Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. And Jacob loved Rachel. Remember that. Jacob loved Rachel uh-huh. and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. And Laban said, It is better that I give her to thee than that I should give her to another man. Abide with me. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed unto him but a few days for the love that he had to her. Uh-huh. Amen. Genesis, 20, uh, Genesis 35. Excuse me. Genesis 35 and verse 16. Genesis 35 and verse 16. And they journeyed from Bethel, and there was but a little way to come to Ephrath. And Rachel travailed, and she had hard labor. And it came to pass when she was in hard labor that the midwife said unto her, Fear not. Thou shalt have this son also. And it came to pass as her soul was in departing, for she died, that she called his name Benoi, but his father called him Benjamin. And Rachel died and was buried in the way to Ephrath, which is Bethlehem. And Jacob set a pillar upon her grave. That is the pillar of Rachel's grave unto this day. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. In these scriptures we have Jacob. In one set of scriptures we have Jacob meeting his wife, Brother J.R. And, and I, I know this is going to be good because I know I love preaching. And I, and I like what God does. and I, I, I do. I like this. But I can't help but say I like preaching on this. It's more apparent cause to preach on. But I, we have Jacob here. And, and he, he loves Rachel. It said that Jacob loved Rachel. Uh-huh. Amen. He had Leah there. was tender-eyed. But Rachel was beautiful. Uh-huh. I don't know. I can't just help, help think Leah wasn't that pretty. Come on. I mean, but in Jacob's eyes, Rachel was beautiful and well favored. Uh-huh. Amen. And, and he says that he worked for her, and it said that it seemed but a few days, them seven years did, for the love that he had unto her. Yep. And then you go to Genesis 35, and I know this is a point in life nobody likes to handle. Sister Ron, I'm sure you didn't like laying down. Brother Jamie, he, he was he, people loved him. He was a good man. Amen. But it happened in life. Yeah. Amen. Life happens. Come on, Amen. Man. I read here and I see kind of like the same situation. She was younger, Brother Jerry. And the reason why I say that is because Isaac died after Rachel died. Come on. So I can't help but believe that Rachel was kind of younger when she died. Uh-huh. Amen. She she died. I mean, it's not, nobody likes putting people down, Brother Jerry, and they're burying, and nobody likes that, but it's something that happens in life. But, it, right. but what God has dealt with me on, I want you to look at somebody that says, when love dies. When love, when love dies. dies. When love dies. Amen. You have Jacob who loved his wife so much, loved her, cared about her, Brother J.R. Uh-huh. He had Leah, he had his other handmaids that he had children by, but it, what was most important to him was Rachel. He loved Rachel so much, I believe even at one point when he was sending all the people, he sent Rachel last to meet Esau. Or kept all his tongues and he sent last in front of him, Sister Pam, was Rachel because he loved Rachel the most. Come on. Amen. He cared about Rachel the most. Uh-huh. Amen. And I, and I begin to think on this, and I'm, I'm going to get into some stuff some people may not like, but it's all right anyways. Come on. Because you know why? I begin to think about when we first got saved. Uh-huh. Yeah. Amen. There was a love came in my heart, Brother J.R., for on. God. Amen. I never knew how to love God. Uh-huh. But it seemed like when I knelt at that altar, well, for me, down at that seat over there, I knelt down and I got a love for God that I never had before. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I felt something that I'd never felt before. And I uh-huh. liked what I felt. And it was love is what I felt. Yeah. I felt a God that set, got reached down his bloody hands, amen, and picked me up where I was for the JR and took me in my situation. He didn't take me and let me get better and let uh-huh. me do good then pick me up. But he put, picked yeah. me up in the sin 
sin that I was in. Yeah. And then he took me. He put his bloody hands all over me, Brother Jr. Yeah. From the cross saying that he loved me that much. And I felt his love that day. And I ain't ever been the same since. I mean, it was love that come in my heart, Brother Jr. Yeah, I can't right. help but say when the scripture says, I nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. I Amen. Mean, what that's talking about is our love for God. Come on. Amen. It's talking about the one that we love. Amen. I love God more than I love anything in this life. Amen. I love God more than, than I love my family. Yeah. I love God more than I love my church family. Oh, I, I met a lot of good people in church, Brother JR. Amen. A lot of good men of God. A lot of good saints of God. Amen. But they ain't nothing compares to the love of Jesus. Amen. They ain't nothing compares, amen, to Him reaching down His nail scarred hands and, and taking me out of my situation and making me a saint of God. Took me from a sinner, amen, and put me into a saint of God. Right. Amen. Transformed me and made me a new creature amen. in Christ Jesus. Behold, all things are uh, passed away and behold, all things have become new Come in my on, life. Man. Amen. I began to walk in newness of life. I was Come praying on. today and I said, you know what I'm looking to? I don't care how many is here tonight. I feel like you already had a feeling there would be not that many people here. But I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to preach to who's here and I'm going to see somebody walk out the door change. Amen. I was praying. I said, God, I don't care. I want somebody to walk out different with their walk with God. Amen. Come on. I, when I preach a word, Brother Jr., I want somebody to go home and say, I'm going to do more for God. Right. I want somebody to go home and say, I'm going to fast tomorrow. Yeah. I want somebody to go home and say, I'm going to pray tonight. Yeah. Amen. If you ain't been praying, I want somebody to be changed and the love for God that they once had to be restored unto them. Yeah. Amen. Because when love dies, amen, that's what happens in our life. Oh. Love dies and we begin to backslide. Amen. We begin to give up in God and lose all hope in God because love died. Oh. Amen. Our love that we found at the altar, amen, died. On us. Amen. We don't have it in our heart no more like we used to. Amen. I get down and pray and I get down and read my Bible and seek God like I never had. Amen. When I wanted the Holy Ghost, I sought God until I got amen. But when you get the Holy Ghost, people tend, Brother Jill, to slack off on God. Come on. And love begins to die. Uh -huh. That's the truth. Come on. It was a hard time for Jacob. Come on. He still had Leah. He still had his sons. Amen. But he didn't have the one he loved. Come on. God will show me. So I began to look this up. And right. The son's name, the, the name that Rachel named the son. Right. Originally, I never saw this till today. Right. But named him Benaiah, I think, or something around the lines. I can't say it well, but it's been Benaiah, Benoiah, something like that. Amen. He, and his name meant a man of sorrow. Uh -huh. Come on. A child of sorrow. <laughs> because it said that she was, she could just, she was in hard labor. Amen. But Jacob, what did he do when the baby come forth? He called it Benjamin. Benjamin means to be the man of the right hand. Come on. Amen. A man of strength, though, JR. Amen. Because what was it? It was because she was in the time that she was in. Uh -huh. Amen. He had love for what was. Jacob, you think he didn't know that she was fixing to die? Amen. She knew that she was going to die. Jacob knew that she was going to die. She was in hard labor on this journey they were making. Amen. I'm assuming they were making one to make it to this place. And they didn't make it to it. And she had the baby. That's why the midwife said, fear not. Amen. Because he said that this, you'll have this child also. Uh -huh. There was some faith that took place. Yeah. said, you're going to have this child also. Why? Because Joseph was there. But he needed to, he sent another son. I know sometimes in our troubles, in our trials, God will send something. I mean, he'll send strength in our time of trouble. Amen. God will show me as he said. He gave him that son to replace what? God, you can't replace the love, but was given something a little bit extra. Amen. There was something. That's why the child had to live. Amen. That's why the midwife looked. I can't help but think. I just can't get that. She had faith. Amen. She said, fear not, because this child's going to live also. Amen. The child's going to live also because it's going to be strength to you. Amen. The, the midwife knew what Rachel didn't know. Jacob knew what Rachel didn't know. Even though it was sorrow to her. She said, oh, I'm going to die. I'm leaving. I'm going for my husband. I'm going for the one that I love. Amen. I'm going to die. But amen, I'm get, I'm leaving him something. I'm not going. I, Jesus, did he tell us? He said, I'll not leave you comfortless. I'll come on to He told us he wouldn't leave us comfortless. Amen. But he sent us another comforter. Amen. I know that God's going to send strength, but they are. What, what is that comforter? It's strength in my time of sorrow. Amen. That's what Rachel seen was sorrow. Amen. But Jacob seen strength. Jacob seen a right hand. Amen. God, I thank you. I know that he's given us strength in this hour. Amen. Amen. Thank, you, Lord. thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. Good. I know love dies. It weakens sometimes, Bo JR. Uh -huh. Getting an argument. 
And it seemed like, man, where's the love at that I had for her when I first married her? Or six months, you ever notice people that call it the honeymoon stage, bud, you know? They say they love them so much, do anything for them. And then, but in six months to a year, two years, the love's gone. Yeah. And I see that going on in the church, Brother Joe, with so many people. Come on. You wonder why they're back set after a year? It's because the love's That's dying. Right. Come on. Try. It's because their heart ain't stirred, Brother Joe. Come on. It's because their heart, I was thinking about they've been captured. Yes. Amen. The love is, is dying on them. Come on. What the who they first loved. Amen's dying on them. Uh-huh. They're losing what they first loved, Brother JR. Right. Losing their first love. I, I tell you what, there's been times in my walk with God when I felt like I'm losing my first love. Uh-huh. My love was dying, Brother JR. Come on, but it took a preached word. Yeah. It took an anointing wow. word to get me out of my situation. To get me out of oh, when I get trouble. I know sometimes people don't want to preach this way. Amen. But you get church hurt sometimes, Brother JR. Come people, on. I'm telling you, in this time, I've never seen Christians act some of the way that they Come have. On. I in their preaching. Amen. In their testimonies yeah. and on Facebook, everything else you see oh. nowadays. Amen. Running people down, talking about who they did this and they did that. Let me tell you, honey, they need to get on an auto or sell. Anybody that's talking about something about how they used to be or what they used to do, amen, you've got to get yourself back to God. Amen. And tell God, say you're sorry. Because let me tell you, honey, he, they may have prayed somewhere or another. They may have been with God somewhere or another. Amen. But you don't know, even though Moses, amen, he slew that Egyptian. He was on the backside of the desert somewhere or another. Uh, and he met God there at a burning bush. Amen. You don't know what goes on on the other side of the desert. You don't know what goes. That's why we gotta keep the love in our heart, brother Jr. That's why we gotta keep ourselves stirred up in the Word of God. Amen. That's why I gotta keep on reading because I'm not satisfied with where I'm at in the Word. Come on. Amen. You should never be satisfied. You can always grow in the Word of God. Amen. You can always grow in the love of God. Right. He said it was the love of God shed abroad by the Holy Ghost yeah. in our hearts. Come on. Yeah. Amen. That's what this thing is. That's the love that's dying, brother Jr. Yeah. It's lack of love of God. Come on. I sing a song. It's, it's, it kind of goes like this. It says, Won't you sing me back home with a song I used to hear and make these childhood memories come alive? Won't you sing to me a song of love for God and fellow men? Come on. Won't you sing me back home before I die. Yeah. Why is it, Brother Jr.? Come on. Exactly what that song said. Yeah. That where's the love went Come for on. God? Where's the love went for our fellow men? Come for on. our fellow, amen, Christians, for the ones that are serving God. Where's the love yeah. for the saints? And that's why they're running us down, Brother Jr. Oh. That's why other Christians are running people down. That's why other people are running down the church, amen, because they don't have love for God. Oh. They don't have love God for the saints of God. Amen. That's what's wrong with the people. Well, nowadays, but they got in the habit of talking about other men of God, talking about other saints of God, and other women of God. Amen. Now, you know what most of it about goes down to is they're jealous of the anointing. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Come on. They're jealous of your testimony. Come on. Uh-huh. They're jealous of what you've done, uh-huh. what God's doing through you. Uh-huh. They're jealous of it. The whole problem of it is they think it's all in us anyways. But if they realize what's inside of who they're talking Amen. about, they quit talking about the anointing. Amen. Yes. Come on. That's why he told us, don't do the prophets and my anointed no harm. And that's why you can't be talking about God's anointing. That's why you can't be running down people that love God. Amen. When you run down people that love God, you'll find yourself where that love starts dying in your life. Amen. Instead of loving God, amen, you love to talk about their love for God. Amen. You you look at their love. You look at their walk with God instead of looking at what you got with God. When you get your eyes, if you're on on, off of your walk with God, you get your eyes on somebody else's walk. Uh I've noticed this, but when people get their eyes on, I've done it before. Get your eyes on somebody else's walk, you begin to stumble yourself. Yeah, that's, it. that's right. That's it. Right you get in a form. You still go through the motions. Uh-huh. You still act like you love God. Come on. You still come to church. Uh-huh. You still shake the brother. You give him the right hand of fellowship. Uh-huh. But behind closed doors, you talk about your brother. Behind closed doors, the love's dying. Uh-huh. Amen. You can put on a good show. 
pastor preached about the countenance before. Yeah. Talking about how you can put on a good countenance for the general yeah. people. It goes the other way. Yeah. We need to keep our countenance. But then there's also people that can keep their countenance. Amen. But on the inside, what's going on? Amen. Amen. That back behind closed doors, what's going on? Where's your love at? Amen. Jacob loved Rachel so much. It didn't matter what people said about him. Uh-huh. Right. It didn't matter that. He could have just said, I'll take my seven years with Lena and go on. Uh-huh. Amen. He got deceived, amen. But he said, I got to go on. Uh-huh. He said, I'll work seven more for the one that I love. Come on. Amen. And as you studied out, Brother Jr., he worked six more years just for his cattle. Uh-huh. Come on. Amen. He worked six more. He stayed six more just for just for what he could get from labor. Come on. So what, what did he do, with Brother Jr.? He wanted to supply for Rachel. Amen. amen. He didn't want to leave out there with nothing. That's right. Come on. What's wrong with people of God today? They ain't labor. They don't care, Sister Donna, about the love of God. They don't care about supplying for the people of God. Uh-huh. Amen. I can be a preacher, but they are and be and be not and be like the one. Amen. That just would have chose to get Leah or get Rachel and get out. Uh-huh. Amen. But he said, "I'm going to stay to supply." Come on. I could be a preacher that says, "I'm going to get Jesus," and that's it. Come on. God could call me to preach. Amen. I don't ever preach a word to help nobody. I don't ever preach a word from God. Amen. I never did work to get what I get from God. Amen. I'll be just like most preachers today. Come on. Amen. But because the love of God is in our hearts, amen, we choose to labor for God. Amen. Amen. I choose to labor. He said, if you suffer with me, you'll reign with me. Amen. Amen. I'm looking to go with him one day, Brother J.R. Amen. He said, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear. Then shall we also appear with him in glory. Amen. I'm looking to go home someday, but I've got to keep my heart towards God. I've got to keep a perfect heart. In all my days, I've got to keep a perfect heart towards God. The love that I've got towards him. Amen. And I don't want my love dying on me. Amen. I, I'm going to go into Peter and them and how the disciples, but they, they talked about how much they love Jesus and how much they would do for him and how they go to death with him. Amen. What they would do for him. Uh-huh. Amen. And what's wrong with people nowadays, Sister Pam? They tell about what they want to do for Jesus. They tell about how much they love God. But what happens when it comes down to the trial, Brother Jay, or the test? Amen. And they're standing there looking just like Peter. Uh huh. That's right. Come on. Denying him. Yeah. Saying all just a few nights before was saying how much he loved him and said he'll go with them all the way. Yeah. And it wasn't just Peter, it was all the disciples. Some people don't preach about this, but where was the rest of them at? Come on. That's it. Peter got enough courage, Sister Pam, to go in the hall with him. Amen. I know he denied him, but where was the rest of them at? Amen. I know he denied him in the test, but the rest of them just denied him right there. They fleed. The the sheep was scattered, but you Amen. But he followed him in there. One caught him over there by him while he was warming his hands in the barrel there, but you by the fire. Amen. And then one of them looked at him and said, aren't you one of them? Uh-huh. Come on. He said, I'm not. right. Come on. And so the third time, the doctor he denied him thrice the cock crew immediately. Amen. And it said the Lord looked at him. Yeah. Lord Jesus. Think about Peter saying all the words that he said come back to him that day. Yeah. Oh, Brother Jay, if I backslide and I go back on God, you know what would come to my mind? All the times that I said I won't give up. Come on. All the times that I said I'm going to win this battle. Yeah. All the yeah. storms that I come through and all the battles that I come through is what's going to come back to me. But what happened to Peter and the rest of the disciples? Yeah. The miracles wore off. Yeah. The bread went away. Come on. He wasn't feeding the five thousand no more. Amen. He was standing in the hall getting beat. Yeah. Amen. Where was the path? They wasn't seeing the miracles. Come on. And what happened? The love died. Come on. They wasn't getting the bread, and the love died. What's wrong with people? They miss church two weeks, and the love dies on them. Amen. Come on. Come on. Miss Church winter comes, hits, and you can't see him for another six months, but Jerry, they had to wait plumb the summer to get back. Amen. Come on. Because the love died. Yep. Amen. And Peter, no, no doubt he felt the Lord, what have I done? I don't know where he went. I know he went off and went bitterly. I don't know where he went, but Jerry, but probably went and hit himself. Come on. Knew he wasn't safe. Come on. I mean, but the, th- the thing about it is, is through all that, out of all the times he told him, I won't do it, Lord. I won't deny you. I'll go with you. He still denied him. Yeah. I've learned talking. You can talk a lot of things. Amen, I but until you start doing it. Come on. Amen. 
You can talk about how much you want to read and how much you want to pray and how much you want to fast and how much you want to do for God and how many people you want to pray for. But amen, until you do it, it don't matter. Come on. It don't mean no, it's as if you didn't if you never even said you wanted to. That's right. Until you do it. Amen. I can talk about buying a new car all the time, but until I get out of my wallet and go down there and, and finance one and buy one, amen, it ain't gonna do me no good anyways. Amen. It's just gonna be a lost dream somewhere floating off somewhere. Love's dying on people. Come on, brother. Love is dying on people. Please. Where's our hearts at tonight? Come on. Was it in the service or was it things at home? Come on. How many times are we guilty of coming to church with something else on our mind? Amen. Coming to church with what's waiting at the house on our mind. Amen. Or what was going on before we left. That's right. I mean, how many times have we come with our heart not on God right. and then wonder, man, that service just wasn't no good? Honey, it's because you didn't put nothing into it. Come it's on. because the love's dying on you. Uh-huh. Come on, brother. Bless him, Lord. Bless him, Lord. God dealt with me, Brother JR, on a message about when Jesus was standing there and Pilate had him <laughs> standing there and they asked him, Which one do you want? Do you want Barabbas or do you want Jesus? And they said, crucify him, put him away. Amen. I thought about that and I said, where was everybody? Yeah. Where was blind Bartimaeus? Yeah. Where was the woman with the issue of blood? But where was Zacchaeus? Where was all the all the Pharisees, all the ones that he touched their hearts and they come out of them doctrines, Brother Jr. Oh. Where were they at that day when he stood there? They were nowhere to be found. Either they were in the crowd. Yeah. Amen. They were the ones saying crucify him. Somebody had to be there. Somebody was standing there. Where were they at? Or did they forget about what Jesus did? You know what they done to let the love die, Brother Jr. Come on. Amen. Amen. That's the truth. Where was Jairus' daughter? Where was Jairus' hat? And his family. Where was Lazarus at, Brother Jr.? They were nowhere to be found. Man. Because the love died. Come on, brother. Oh, once they got their miracle, where was they at to stop it? He healed enough people, Brother Jr., and saved enough people. Amen. They should have been there standing saying, Don't crucify him. Come on. They could have been there overriding that crowd that was standing there as many people as Jesus touched. But where were they found? Come on. The love died. Bless you, Lord. Come on. Come on, brother. Jesus looked at him and said, Except ye eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part with me. Uh-huh. You have no life with me. Amen. Amen. They walked away with him, and Jesus turned around and looked at him and said, Will you go away also? Peter looked at him and said, This is why you got to look at what Peter done. Amen. Uh-huh. And how he turned and walked away and denied him. Uh-huh. He said, Where else can we go, Lord? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Yeah. I mean, there's power in what I'm preaching to you tonight. Amen. Yeah. There's power in the words that I speak. Our spirit and life. Amen. Yeah. It's going. It's edifying you. Amen. If you'll take it. That's right. Amen. Amen. If you receive from the master's table. That's right. If you'll have what he's given you. Amen. Love will die. Come on. You don't let it grow. Amen. That's why he told us to be rooted and grounded in love. Uh huh. Come on. He didn't say be rooted and grounded in the things of the world, but he said be rooted and grounded in love. Come on. That's what keeps us founded, Brother JR. That's why he told us, Paul taught us about love. Uh-huh. He said that prophecy will cease. Uh-huh. Tongues, tongues will cease. Prophecy will fail. <coughs> All these other things, they'll fail. Uh-huh. Amen. But love. Uh-huh. Come on. Faileth not. Amen. Love does more, amen, than what any of the prophecy, any yeah. tongues, whatever. You see somebody speaking in tongues, I mean, they ain't got love. It don't do them no good anyways. Yeah, amen. Come on. But it's the love that we have for our brethren and for God, amen, that makes us something in God. That's right. Yeah, amen. Come on, brother. That's right. That's one thing I look for people. If they're the first thing when I see them, if they have an attitude with me, amen, I don't think there's something right, though, JR. Come on. The first thing off, if they're rude to me, I think, where's the love of God at? Amen. That's right. Come amen. On, Come on. That's right. The first thing they're talking to me bad, Sister Pam, I don't look at the first, the last thing that's on my mind is a Christian. That's right. Amen. amen. Where's the love of God at? Come on. How many times have we snapped at somebody? Yep. Yeah. Come on. Amen. And people don't realize, Bojo, I took this serious when I walk with God of what people think about me. Amen. I'm not talking about what my doctrine will think about me, but I'm talking about whether they see me as a person. Do they see a Christian in me? Come on. I talk to mom about this very often. People, most people that I know, most Christian people, and even some most sinners that I know, most of my family, Bojo, thinks highly of me because I behave myself not unseemly. Not in a way that, amen, I, but I behave, behave myself wisely. Come on. Like David done. Amen. amen, I watch what I say. That's 
I watch where I go and what I do. Uh -huh. Why? Because they want them to see the love of God in me. That's right. Amen. Amen. The effect of when you get there. That's right. I don't want people looking at me and saying I don't want nothing to do with Him. That's right. I'm not trying to get reverence for no glory, brother Jerry, but I want to get reverence to show people that they can see a God in me. Amen. <laughs> they can see Jesus in me. That's right. I mean, if He ain't being manifest in your life, where's the love at? Amen. I mean, Jacob wanted to manifest His love to Rachel. Uh -huh. He wanted them to know, and He wanted everybody to know. He even let Leah know, I don't want you. Come on. I want Rachel. Bless him, Lord. Come on. You're not good enough for me. The world ain't good enough for me, Brother JR. Amen. Right. Come on. Bubby, the world ain't good enough for us. Right. The things in the world ain't good enough for us. We got to have God. Yeah. Right. I ain't no good without God. Amen. Amen. Come on. I've got to have God. That's right. In my everyday walk, I've got to have God. I mean, I look into a passage in the Bible. I mean, I preached this when I preached on love. That one time I preached on this, and, and God began to show me some more on this. And, I mean, I think that in Samuel, I believe it was, when he had Amnon there, it said that he fell sick for his sister Tamar. Uh -huh. And I began to think about when he went in there. <coughs> At first, she was telling him before she, when he, when she went there, said, "Just make me a cake." Uh -huh. Sent him in there. Sent in tomorrow to make the cake for Amnon, amen. All that was going on in his mind because he loved her. Yeah. Amen. But tomorrow said, Well, listen, Amnon, if we just go to the king, he'll give you. Uh -huh. Give me to you. Yeah. Uh -huh. yep. We don't got to do this thing. It shouldn't be done in Israel. Come on. Yeah. Hear me now. Yep. Come on. That's what he told him. She told yep. him. That's right. yep. And it said that he forced her, yep. raped her. Oh. Amen. Because the love, but then it said once she wouldn't do what he would do, Come on. what he would have her to do. Yeah. Amen. It said that the love uh -huh. or the hate that he had for her was greater than the love that he had for her. Yeah. Amen. But think about how sick that he fell for her. Come on. Think about it, church. He felt so sick that he would want to delay with his own sister. Uh -huh. Amen. Loved her that much, wanted her that much, and he could have had her back in this time the way it was, but JR, it wasn't like it is nowadays. Come on. Amen. They married in the family, anyways. Uh -huh. It was common for this to happen. Yeah. Come on. Amen. But what, what you've got to look at in this story is his hate was greater than the love that he had. Yeah. Think about it. He felt so sick that he would pray for Sister Pam. Yeah. So what kind of heart did he have when he was done? Come on. The love died. Yeah. The love died in his heart for his Come sister. On. Instead, he hated her. Think about that. The hate that rose up in his heart because... When we don't get what we want from God, Brother JR, uh -huh. what happens to us? Uh -huh. I've been praying for months on this and God ain't done nothing. What do you think Amnon was saying? I just want my sisters all I want. And when she wouldn't do what he wanted, there was hate arose in her heart. Uh -huh. In his heart. Come on. And then what happens to us? What's rising in our hearts? Come on. Bless him, Lord. Brother Jay, what's rising in the Christians' hearts nowadays? Because God ain't giving them what they want. People hate rising in their hearts because a loved one dies. Uh -huh. Hate, I see this happen all the time, but your people. Hey. Someone dies, they blame it on God. Yes, they do. Come on, that's right. Yeah. But sometimes they need to double check and think of the lifestyle they live. Amen. Amen. Even if they were a Christian, but they still go back to where they was. I know God forgives, but He also told us that whatsoever we sow, that shall we also reap. Amen. Amen. He told us that if we honor our brother and mother, amen, we'll have long life. So you never know what went on before. When people died 20 years old, but y'all, I have a feeling that something went wrong when they were a kid. Come on. Amen. Yeah. Come on. It's the word. But the hate that arose up in his heart, could you imagine it? How strong it probably was. Amen. How strong he hated his sister. Yeah. Would get up enough courage by trying to rape her. Would even think to do it. Uh -huh. And I know he had people putting stuff in his head. I know that. Amen. But he loved her. That was the whole moral story. He loved her. Uh -huh. yeah. We love God. Right. When we come to the altar, we first lay sights on how God is to us. We love Him. Uh -huh. Amen. The grace flowing through our life. Yeah. Amen. And we love Him so much. Amen. But when we don't get what we want, 
What happens to us? When we don't feel the presence of God like we want, what happens to us? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. The love dies. And something else rises yeah. in our hearts. Come on, brother. I could have thought about how much hate that Jacob would have had. Had he maybe had to keep on working for Rachel. And maybe never got her to jail. But how much hate would have rose up to Laban? But he loved her. He was willing to do anything. And if that's not your heart tonight, I mean, you need to be on an altar somewhere. Amen. Willing to do it. That's the reason why I have a problem, Brother Joe, with people that, that, that come against the Word of God. Uh -huh. When somebody tells you that the Word of God says this and gives them Scripture, and they say, I ain't having that, that tells me they don't love God. Amen. Come on. Amen. Because the real love of God says, I'll do anything for you. That's right. That's right. Come on. Amen. The real love of God is saying, I'll go an extra mile with you. That's right. Yeah. Through the, t through the thick and through the thin, I'm going to go with you. Right. When I'm sick and when I'm healthy, I'm going through with you. Oh. Amen. That's somebody that loves them. Amen. That's the reason why people stand up there, Brother JR, and they say their vows. They say for better or for worse, uh -huh. for rich or for poor, for sickness or in health. That's right. Till death do us part. Uh -huh. That's what happened here, Brother in this case with Rachel. Come on. Loved her, supported her, gave her what she needed. Uh -huh. That's why he worked the six years. He wanted to supply her for everything that she needed in life. Come on. He was willing to work for her. I'm willing to work for him, Brother Jalen. Brother Blake, I'm willing to go the extra mile for him. Yeah. yeah. I'm willing to go the extra six years, six years for God. Come on. Not just work my seven and then get him. Amen. I'm willing to go even more for him, Brother Jalen. Yes. I've heard some pre people preach it. I've even preached it this way before. <laughs> he went seven more years for Rachel. Amen. But he didn't just go seven more years for Rachel. He went six more for the cattle. Come on. He loved her that much. Uh -huh. I can't help but think that's the reason why he done it. Yeah. It had nothing to do with Leah. It had nothing to do with Laban, but because he loved her. Amen. I can't help but think that. In my mind, Sister Pam, if I was in his shoes, that's the only reason I would have done it. Amen. I could have got my stuff and went back to Mommy and Daddy's house. Or I could have gone in and got me and got me a different land. And this time it ain't like it was nowadays. Come on. They just went and picked that land, it was their land. I mean, that's the problem. We need people that has a heart on God. That's right. We need people that are willing to go the extra mile for God. Amen. Not, uh, yet for the people of God, that's good to go the extra mile. Uh -huh. But more so for God. Because yep. yep. if you're going the extra mile for God, you'll go the extra mile for the people. Yep. That's right. Come on. Amen. That's right. If you love God. Amen. He taught us in the Word to love the brotherhood. Mm -hmm. But God's been doing me on loving the people around me. That's right. Yeah. Treating them as a way I'd like to be treated. That's right. Doing unto them as I'd like to be done. Words, yeah. Loving my neighbor as myself. Uh -huh. That's what love does. Right. But when love dies, I mean, you'll treat them any old way. Uh -huh. What happens to a marriage when things don't go their way? Uh -huh. They begin to have words, bro, Jim. Yeah. They begin to do things they've never done before. Amen. Just like when you get fall in love, you begin to do things you've never done before then. But whenever you fall out of love, when love dies in your relationship, in your marriages, what happens? Come on. You get annoyed with them. Come on. You're tired of them. And I know from my own experiences, Come on. you don't like hearing their voice no more. Come on. And that's what's happened to people anymore in the church. They get so far. People, see, Brother Gerald, when we come in this way, we wasn't always the way we are in holiness and believing Jesus was God. But when we come to it, we could have come to a certain point and said, I ain't going no more. Right. Amen. But when you truly love him, no matter what his voice says, you're going to go to it. Amen. Yeah. He come said, on. my sheep know my voice. Yeah. They hear my voice. They're known of him. That's right. Yeah. Amen. That's the reason why when we heard these things, Sister Pam, we had to go into them. That's, That's right. right. Yeah. Amen. When I heard this, there was something within me. He said, I love him that much. Oh, Brother Hunter, ain't those hot during the summer? Yes, honey, they're not, they're, it's not cool. Come Amen, on. but it ain't for nobody anyways. Come on. I love him. That's right. Come That's on. my motto. I love him. Amen. Come now, on. I see some people won't want to have that. I got word for it, but not only do I got word for it, I love him. No matter what it is. That's right. Yeah. But there are some people, that's the problem with people. They're looking for it in the Word. Honey, if it wasn't in the Word and God told me, I'd still do it. Come on. Amen. Come on. It don't matter. It's because I love him. That's right. Yeah. See, the problem is, you can't tell me God won't speak to you. I know some people say he'll speak to you out of the Word, but I've had God speak to me things that wasn't on the Word and bring them to me and show me stuff in that even though it wasn't the Word. Come on. 
Just like he spoke to them, Brother Jr. He'll speak to us. Yes, he will. This is a guideline. This is what to go by. But that don't mean God won't tell you to go pray for somebody. That's right. Come on. I've seen some weird things happen in services, Brother Jr. Uh-huh. I've seen pools come out and everything else and the sun come out in services and God move in it. Yeah. Amen. You can't tell me God won't speak to you. He and so He will speak to you. Yes, he will. He'll tell you what to do. Amen. Just like He told them what to do, He'll tell you what to do. That's right. yes, he will. But you've got to listen to Him. Uh-huh. That's, that's when you love Him. When you don't love Him, you won't be obedient to Him. A uh, wife that don't love their husband, they won't be obedient to Him. That's the truth. When they say, honey, I don't want you going there. They'll go anyway. Either they, they'll either not go because they love them or they'll go because they, they're against them. Yeah. Uh-huh. Amen. There's some people don't want their marriage to work. Right. There's some people don't want a good marriage, Sister Pam. Right. <laughs> they'd rather it be hell all the time. Uh-huh. They'd rather be in an argument all the time. Yep. I don't know where this is coming from. They'd rather fight than they would have a good marriage. Uh-huh. They'd, rather, they'd rather be running off to the bar somewhere than to be with their husband. Come on. Yep. They want to be laying out at 12 o'clock at night instead of laying in the bed with their working husband. Uh-huh. Right. Amen. Or the other way around. Come on. When the wife's there with all the kids, their husband will better be running off somewhere with another woman or whatever else takes place. Uh-huh. Amen. Because that's not love. That's right. That's when love died. At one point, see, people's got to understand that most of these marriages, especially the older ones now, nowadays, is different. But back in the day, Jerry, more up in, I don't know, probably 60 years ago, most of the marriages was because of love. Uh-huh. Now, nowadays, that ain't the case, but most of the marriages are because of love, and any of them that was destroyed was because love died. Come on. And that's what's happened in the church. Amen. Our marriage of Him, it ain't Him. He said He'd never leave us nor forsake us, but it's our love towards Him. Come on. His love never, it never does grow weak, Brother J.R. No. Now, even when I'm doing wrong, He still loves me. Yeah, I've seen some of these movies, but Gerald, when you got the wife setting up, waiting up for the husband to get home from all his stuff he's doing. Uh-huh. Amen. You see that happen. That's how God is with us. He's just sitting there waiting up. Yeah. Amen. While we're out doing our stuff. Come on. Amen. And we already knew before we was doing it, shouldn't have been doing it. Yeah. Amen. Do you ever think of it like that? God's still sitting there waiting for us. Come on. He's waiting for you to come home. Yeah. Amen. That's what that's what the father was doing for that prodigal son, waiting for his son to come home. Wait till he blew all this portion that he gave him uh-huh. to come back home. Amen, because he loved him. He had told him to get back out there in the world. But because he loved him, he ran and kissed him. Uh-huh. I can't help but think that's how God does this. I know he has mercy. He says his mercy endures forever. We got grace. I know grace will eventually run out. Amen. Amen, after a while. I don't know the limit. I can't tell you. Amen, but God has grace for his people. Yes, he does. That was an example of God being merciful. The prodigal son was, Brother Jr. Yeah. Showing the father what how he'll treat you when you come back. And but people, the church nowadays, they, they when they get in the hall pen, they love it. And when they, they like being there. Uh-huh. They would rather be there than they would be in the Father's house. Amen. And but I love him. I, I I hope that some way or somehow you go home thinking about this and meditate upon it. Amen. But you know, I've been taking lately a lot of times of going home with the messages and meditating upon them. And just thinking about what they said and how I can change my life with it. Yeah. How I can apply it to my life. Because, see, the problem is with people, they, they get in a form of just hearing the preaching and going home. Right. Yeah. And then if you ask somebody what I preach, probably when, or next Wednesday night, they probably can't even tell you what I preached. Come on. They may give you a title of what I preached, uh-huh. but can they tell you what I preached? Come on. Let's that tells you how word was their hearts that night. Amen. Yeah. Right. I, do, I love them. How many loves them tonight? Amen. Can we stand our feet and praise Him? I mean, he said, all the men will praise the Lord. Amen. Do you love him tonight? Yes. Do you love him tonight? He said, bless the Lord at all times. Oh, God, he, he's just looking for praise. He's just looking for somebody to love him. He ain't asking you to do nothing that you ain't never done before. He's just letting you lift your hands towards heaven and give him praise for who he is. Your path for your wonderful yes. Lord, to the mighty God. Thank you, Jesus, for who you are. Lord, you're everything, Jesus.